Hello, my name is Tomoki Moria. I'm very happy to be able to talk to you. The title of my presentation is Sigamo, a super singular isogeny based PKE and its application to a PLF. And here are main results of our study. We proposed a new isogeny based PKE schemes named Sigamo and C Sigamo. These schemes have in-CPA security without using hash functions. Moreover, we constructed a null-lingo type pseudorandom function based on Sigma. This pseudorandom function is constructed without using hash function. And here are contents. First, I'd like to tell you the introduction of isogeny-based cryptography. Here are main properties of isogeny-based cryptography. Isogeny-based cryptography is considered as one candidate of post-quantum cryptography. And it is based on isogeny problem. In other words, the assumption that isogeny problem can't be solved by even using a quantum computers is the basis for the security of isogeny-based cryptography. And empty curves are used in isogeny-based cryptography. And the main merit is the key ranks are short. And the main demerit is isogeny-based schemes take more time than those of other candidates of post-quantum cryptography. These are main properties of isogeny-based cryptography. And next, I will tell some mathematical backgrounds about isogeny-based cryptography. This is a definition of isogenies. An isogeny is a morphism between elliptic curves which is also a group morphism on elliptic curves. And there is an important formulas about isogenies. Values formulas are formulas for computing isogenies. From an elliptic curve E and the finite circle G of E, it outputs an elliptic curve E over G and an isogeny phi mapping from E to E over G satisfying kernel of phi equals G. This is a very important formula for isogeny based cryptography. On the other hand, there is one problem. For isogenous FD curves E and F, compute an isogeny between them. This problem is called isogeny problem and it is considered hard to solve this problem. This table shows the computational complexity for solving isogeny problems. As shown in this table, even using the quantum computers, it is hard to solve isogeny problem. Summary, this computation is easy by using values formulas. However, this computation is hard even using the quantum computers. Isogeny-based cryptography is based on this asymmetry. And these are the super singular isogeny-based schemes. The main result of our study as a proposal of this Sigamo and C Sigamo. And these schemes are based on this C side key exchange. So I next explain the C side key exchange. C side is a Dicky Hellman type key exchange based on a commutative group action. First, I'll take a group element R and compute its action on L2 curve E0. And she computes R E0. And Bob computes bare E0. 
and they exchange these empty cups. And next, Alice computes group action on Bay E0, and she gets R Bay E0. And Bob compute Bay R E0. As this group action is commutative, they share same empty cups. This is a seaside key exchange. And next I explain what is this group action. Let O be an order of an imaginary chaotic field. In a seaside setting, O equals Z root minus P. And let's see O be the ideal class group of O. And let R be the ideal class of an ideal R in CLO. And let ELPO be the set of FP isomorphism classes of super single FD cards, which satisfy its end morphism link is isomorphic to O. Then the this map is a free and transitive group action, where ER is a component of kernels of endomorphisms in integral ideal R. And this ER is a subgroup of E, and RE is defined as E over ER. Then this map becomes a free and transitive group action. However, uh, generally, this map cannot be computed efficiently. So in a seaside setting, we use special techniques for computing this map efficiently. First, we take a prime number p and this equation. We have a 1 to ln are small distinct odd primes. And let pi p be a p province map over E. There, if E is super singular, that pi p is isomorphic to z root minus p. And we define ly as ideal generated by ly and pi p minus 1. And ly bar as ideal generated by ly and pi p plus 1. Then by some heuristic assumptions, ideal class group of z root minus p is approximated to this set where m is the smallest integer satisfying this inequality. By the values formulas, group actions of L1 to Ln can be easily computed. So the group actions of ideal classes in this set can be easily computed. So we take E1 to En as input and consider actions of these ideal classes. Then we can compute group actions efficiently. This is a seaside key exchange. And next, I explain the public key encryption based on seaside. I will explain one of the simplest PKE based on seaside. The public key is E0 and R E0. The secret key is R. And let printix be mu. And ciphertext is bay e0 and mu o plus s, where s is a coefficient of r bay e0. And in decryption, by using r, we compute r bay e0. So we get s. Then computing mu o plus s o plus s gives the message mu. This is a PKE based on Seaside. It is very similar to Algama encryption. But there are differences between this PKE and Algama encryption. This PKE is not in CPA secure. Then I explain the reason. Let B0 and CI be the ciphertext of the plain text randomly chosen from mu0 and mu1. And suppose i equals 0. Then 
Ti of plus mu zero is a quotient of supersingular empty cup. It is a quotient of RV E zero. And Ci of plus mu one is a quotient of an ordinary empty cup with high probability. So, uh, by judging supersingularity, we know which plain text is encrypted. So, this PKE is not NCPA secure. And this is one of our motivations of our study. Next, we explain the construction of C gamma and CC gamma. First, I explain the image points under group actions. As we've seen, group actions are computed by using an isogeny phi r whose kernel is er. So uh, we can consider the image points under this isogeny. And here is 7. Let p be a 5 or more and E be a super singular empty curve defined over FP. And let R be an integral ideal of FP and morphism link of E. Then the image of a point P in E under this isogeny is unique F2 plus minus 1. We denote the equivalent class by RP by RP. By the seven, we have the commutative diagram. C gamma and C gamma is based on this commutative diagram. Next, I explain the main idea of C gamma. Both sent to the secret message mu to Alice. First, Alice compute this group action, and she gets R E zero and R P zero. And let these two sets be public key. And Bob compute these two group actions. And here is point. Bob compute multiplication of mu and B R P zero. And both send the two set to Alice as a ciphertext. And Alice computes this group action. And she gets RBE0 and RBP0. And by solving this group algorithm problem, Alice gets the message mu. That if the point mu BRP0 and RBEP0 have a smooth order, by using Paul Hellman algorithm, the discrete algorithm problem can be easily solved. This is the main idea of a CGM. Next, I explain the construction of CGM. Let P be a prime such that this equation. This is very similar to prime in C size setting. That here is a different point. In CSI setting, this number is 4. But in SIGAM setting, this number is 2 to the r power. And let P be a point of order 2 to the r power in E0 FP. The public key is this set. And secret key is the integral ideal. The parenthesis mu which is embedded in a group of units of z over 2 to r power z. And this is a ciphertext, and here is a point. And in decryption, by using r, compute rbe0 and rbp0. And using Polyhelman algorithm, we can compute the message u. This is a construction of the C gamma. Next, I'll explain the construction of C C gamma. C C gamma is a compression version of C gamma. 
first, I'll just compute this action. Z outputs these two sets as a public key. And Bob computes these two actions. And he also computes this point. Here, this blue point is a point which has order 2 to R and define it over FP. And Alice and Bob publicly shared the algorithm generates this point. There are many algorithms like this. For example, algorithm which outputs the point which has the smallest x coordinate among points meeting the conditions. And by solving this logarithm problem, Bob gets mu star. By this computation, Bob compressed the information of this set to mu star. And then Bob compute the multiplication of mu star and bay p0. And Bob sent to Alice only this set as a ciphertext. And Alice compute this action and she get this set. And this set is equals this set. And now let's compute this blue point, and by solving this logarithm problem, as gets the secret message mu. And this is a CC gamma. Here is a comparison of C gamma and CC gamma. The size of the public key in C gamma and CC gamma are same. It is four times log base two p. And size of the plain text are also same. It is r minus 2. But there is different between size of a ciphertext. Size of ciphertext in sigma is 4 times log base 2p. But the size of ciphertext in c sigma is 2 times log base 2p. So c sigma is a compression version of the sigma. And this is a construction of C gamma and C C gamma. Next, I explain the security and computation costs of C gamma and C C gamma. First, I explain the new assumption, P C S S D D H assumption. This assumption is similar to the D H assumption. In the C gamma setting. The following two probability distributions are computationally indistinguishable. The first distribution is come from a commutative diagram. And in the second distribution, the final point is multiplied by k, where k is a random element of a group of units in z over 2 to rz. So uh, in the second distribution, the final point it's a random point. And any PPT algorithm cannot distinguish these distributions. This is the PCSSDDH assumption. And it is hard to solve that PCSSDDH assumption is true. This assumption has come from the idea that it is hard to compute the image points under a hidden isogeny. And it is also hard to solve that this idea is true. But we have an example which makes this idea seem true. And this is a torsion attack. Let pi be an isogeny. And in a special situation, we can compute pi from the points p, q, and pi p and pi q, where p and q generate a certain torsion subgroup. In other words, by computing the images of p and q under pi, we can solve isogeny problem. As you know, isogeny problem is hard to solve. So the problem computing an image point is also considered difficult.
and here is one cell. If the PC SSDDH assumption holds, then C gamma and CC gamma have in CPA security. And here is a comparison with other PK schemes. SIDH C side have the in CPA security. But these schemes use hash functions. And SETA does not use hash functions. But SETA have only one way CPA security. So in this meaning, Sigma is more secure than these PK schemes. Next, I explain the computation costs of Sigma and C Sigma. We implemented Sigma and C Sigma and measured the computational cost of these schemes. Furthermore, we measured those of C side and compared those costs. We take three parameters. First parameter is P0. It is from the C side original paper. The second one is P128. It is 522 bit and the size of print text is 128 bit. And third one is P256. It is 515 bit and the size of print text is 256 bit. And this is the result of our experimentation. Values in the table are values of m plus 0.8 times s plus 0.05 times a, where m is the number of multiplication of fp, s is the number of squaring of fp, and a is the number of addition of fp. And the values of encryption and decryption of c side are values predicted from key generation. And as shown in this table, in 128 bit, the costs of C gamma and C gamma is about 1.5 than that on C side. And in 256 bit, the costs of C gamma and C gamma is about 3 or more times than those of C side. And finally, I explain the PLF based on C gamma. And I explain the pseudonym function based on sigma. The public key is E0 and P0. And secret key is ideas R0 to RT. And this is input. Output is a new x. It satisfies this equation. This is our proposed new pseudorandom function. And there is one cell. If the PC SDDH assumption and DDH assumption hold, then the function F is a pseudorandom function. Where C SDDH assumption is a security assumption for C side. So our proposed function is a pseudorandom function. And finally, I explain the computational costs of our proposed pseudorandom function. In a natural way, the computation cost of the POF is a dose of t times group action, where t is a humming weight of the input. But before computing these group actions, computing the sum vectors, we can reduce the computation costs. By using the central limit cell, we conclude the costs of the POF are about root 8t over 3 pi times that of the group action of c. This is also confirmed by the experimentation, and this is the result of our experimentation. This is the cyclical values, and these are the values from experimentation. These values are very close. And then uh, my presentation is over. Uh, thank you for listening.